we're talking about the offense with Abe Lucas. Abe, we were just having a conversation about how important the offensive line is going to be. Obviously, it's always important in football, but I mean, when it comes to this offense, you guys are so close to kind of like dipping into the top five of a scoring offense. You were top 10 last year. How'd you feel the year went as a whole? Um, it was okay. I mean, obviously, there's always things to improve on. Um, you know, and like you said, we want to be top five or if not top, top two. You yeah. know, that's really the main goal. So, I mean, just trying to shoot for that as much as possible. Abe, how, how important is cohesion on the offensive line? Because before you and, and Charles were here, it felt like there were a lot of moving parts on the offensive line. You, you saw different starting lineups. But last year and going into this year, it feels like a lot more guys kind of have their roles settled into. How important is cohesion on that line? Uh, cohesion is, I mean, it's important to a team or to the team, not just, I guess, the offensive line in general. Because you know, if one person messes up, that could screw up the entire thing. And that's just that doesn't just go for offensive line; that's everything. But um, I think we're a lot more cohesive than we have been. Not that last year wasn't cohesive, but you know, I mean, I guess even for like myself and uh, Charles, just coming in with like a, another year's worth of knowledge certainly helps. This is our first time being able to talk to you now that your season is fully wrapped. I know that we're getting ready for 2023, but looking at 2022, what was the like coolest part of your first year? And what was maybe the most humbling part? Um, I would say the coolest part was just being able to complete a year in like the top of the top in terms of football business, you know yeah. I mean? This is this is where it is, you know. <clears throat> and I guess the most humbling part was uh, I don't know if it's necessarily considered humbling, but just having um, that longevity and having to last that long yeah. throughout the season that was that was kind of just tough on the body. And then you know there were some mental blocks to get through. Meaning like learning as a rookie, like oh this is what it feels like to get to week 13, 14, yeah, 15. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't imagine. You got to experience playoff football in your rookie season. Uh, obviously, the wild card game didn't go the way we had all hoped. But was what was the maybe biggest thing you learned in that environment with how different it is from the regular season? Um, I mean, it's just there's more on the line to it. You know, I mean, everybody's guaranteed uh, 17 games in the regular season, even if you have the worst record. But once you get to playoff football, it's win or go home, and you're representing, you know, the entire fan base, city, your team. So. Definitely a little bit more added pressure. Uh, Curtis and I have been talking about kind of how tough the West is going to be. I don't think most consider it the toughest division in football, but you do have the def one of the defending teams from the NFC Championship here, and that is a tough defense that you get a very up-close and personal look at two times a year. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be primarily about San Francisco, but so that we can watch and learn about the Seahawks defense, what does a great defensive line do really well? A uh, great defensive line is able to um, I'd say probably at least half the time control the line of scrimmage. I mean, if you get more than half of that or more than half of the time controlling the line of scrimmage, you have a pretty dominant defensive front. Yeah. Um, I mean, but that's difficult because, you know, you're going up against good offensive lines too. And it's the same vice versa for the offensive line. If the offensive line can control the line of scrimmage, yeah. I mean, the game really becomes easy. Um, and they're, you know, they have a lot of good players over there, so yeah. it's always a challenge. What area of your game have you been working on uh, the most here during camp? Uh, I mean, I hate to sound cliche, but I'm kind of just working on everything. Uh, but I think the most um, the most growth can become or can come from like just having more knowledge and mental reps and such. Because uh, then, I mean, you can know what to do, but if you don't know why, it just makes it that much harder. I know you're focused on your own game, but tell us a bit, if anything, that you've seen from some of the rookies you guys are working with, whether it's Jackson, whether it's Kenny out there taking reps because you guys got two running backs injured. What are mm -hmm. you seeing? Um, I mean, I guess starting on the offensive line, uh, Olu's been getting some reps with the ones. Um, he's a smart dude, and, you know, he just has to continue learning and developing. Um, Kenny, uh, I play with, I actually play with Kenny's brother, Dion, at Washington State. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and they both run the same. They're just super downhill and aggressive. And so it's good to see, uh, I mean, Pete and John, they know how to draft really well, and they did it again this year. Yeah. Abe, you're a kook, and uh, the Pac-12 is in a very weird spot, especially over the course of the next, like, 24 to 48 hours. What's your read on all this? Because I can't imagine, you know, seeing your alma mater, you know, maybe not existing in the Pac-12 any longer. I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've thought about it, I guess, for a while. Um, I could see it to where, like, the Pac-12 kind of just dissolves completely. Um, and then, you know, they, I mean, the bigger the bigger schools would go to probably bigger conferences. Like, I've heard, like, you know, UW and Oregon and Arizona, Colorado, like moving to the Big Ten or Big 12 or whatever it is. Um, 
I mean, WSU would probably be, or maybe be aligned to like Mountain West or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's really, I mean, like you said, it's really kind of rocky, touch and go. So mm -hmm. we'll just have to see what happens. It's one thing to just be an alum and, and have these connections to your school. It's another thing to have given a lot to your school as a player and a mm -hmm. lot of time and sacrifice. When you talk to, if you do talk to other players, whether on this team, whether it's old teammates who went to Pac-12 schools, what's the mood like? Are you guys like, oh, it was inevitable? Is there anger? Is there kind of like a, a an indifference? I mean, uh, I mean, it's more indifferent to me. I don't know about other people, um, or, but it really just depends on the school, you know. I mean, I think I, or people maybe from my school or like Oregon State and other like. You know, not small schools, but, but like, they feel a little more yeah, powerless. Yeah, this, exactly. Yeah. You know, because they don't necessarily have like the most money or anything like that. And like WSU certainly didn't compared to like UW. So, I mean, but what can you do? Right. Uh, you've got the scrimmage tomorrow. You've got the preseason game. Uh, the first preseason game is a week from today. Uh, what's what's the intensity like? Do you guys kind of treat this how you normally would a game week, even though? guys roles may be a little different in the preseason than they are in the regular season yeah i mean i try to as much as possible i'm not trying to you know overdo it or anything in terms of my mental prep i'm just really trying to come in and take care of business like i've always tried to um and yeah as far as practice goes i mean it's not like amped up or yeah. anything it just is what it is you know we practice like we normally do the Blue Angels are flying overhead, which is what you guys are hearing in the background. Earlier, Curtis and I were uh, talking about like whether we would ever uh, get in a fighter jet. We would, <laughs> we would We would not. Would you do it for free? Would you have to be paid for it? If you would have to be paid, how much would someone have to pay you? I mean, to get in, <laughs> Abe, I mean, to get in one of these fighter jets and, and they are you gotta flying. Be, I think you got to be kind of small to get in, too. Yeah. Let's pretend that you can. <laughs> How comfortably can I fit? You're not comfortable at all. Because oh, it's like no, a two-seat two seat yeah, cockpit. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. I heard stories of, like, I wouldn't do it if I was uncomfortable, let me say that. I've okay. heard, I heard that, like, Jimmy Graham used to fly those types of planes around or something like what? that. Or he was, like, he a pilot of some like, kind. He would fly, like, those, like, seaplanes. Yeah, something like that. But he's, I mean, he's, he's a pretty a big, big dude. dude. Yeah, um, that's true. Okay, let's I mean, assume that you are comfortable. Oh, yeah, I'd probably do it. Why? Why not? <laughs> this is, oh, God. <laughs> Abe's Are you got, like a Abe's roller coaster guy in, too? I mean, again, you're like bigger, so you can't really no, do all I mean, the fun stuff. Yeah, I'm not necessary. It depends on the roller coaster, really. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I don't. I mean, I have a fear of being decapitated because I'm too tall. That's you know? a very, That's a very normal fair, fear. Yeah. I, I have a fear of that, that, and I'm yeah. <laughs> very yeah. short. That, yeah, that's not weird at all. Yeah, I went to Disneyland when I was a sophomore in high school, and I barely was fitting then. So. I haven't been on a roller coaster since then, probably. But if I could fit comfortably, I'd then you would probably do it. Do it yeah. Oh, God, that's horrifying. It's just <laughs> absolutely horrifying. Uh, all right, so uh, we're going to let you go. We know that you're very busy, but we are going to be having our eyes on practice today, as will everyone on the berm. Uh, do you know already what you guys are working on a little bit today? Uh, same as Yeah, same, same as, as usual. usual. Yeah. All right, guys, keep Football an eye style. on Abe. <laughs> uh, this <laughs> offensive line and their progression is going to be a huge, huge part of the season this year. I cannot, cannot overstate that enough. Abe, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Abe. We appreciate yeah, it. No problem. Um, please don't get on any fighter jets. <laughs> I, I don't want to, if John Schneider's listening, I'm not taking credit for this. Yeah, I'm not uh, responsible for this. I, I, this is not my fault at all. He is Abe Lucas, Seahawks tackle. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.